Hello guys, today we're going to be talking about finding limit algebraically. And instead of talking about the, this entire topic, we're going to be solving three problems today. So we're going to be solving uh, three problems. One of them would be uh, using direct substitution, and then two of them would be using a factoring method to find the limit algebraically. So in our very first problem, I see that limit x approaches negative 1, as you see there, x squared plus 2x minus 4. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and use the direct substitution method because I don't see any rational expression that is going to cause our uh, that is going to cause our uh, rational expression go undefined when I substitute negative one. So that's why I'm going to use my direct substitution of negative one. So my limit will become limit x approaches negative one x squared plus 2x minus 4 will be equal to, if I just plug in negative 1 for x, it's going to be equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 4. So negative 1 squared is equal to positive 1, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 and minus 4. So if I simplify this expression, I'm going to get negative 5 as an answer of this limit. So in this question, we just use the direct substitution method to calculate our limit. So let's move on to the second limit problem. So in this case, I'm going to be using factoring. You can ask me why. Because if I just substitute 0 into this uh, limit, I'm going to get 4 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 over 0. So this entire expression at the top would be 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. Okay. So to be able to avoid from getting something indeterminate form, so I'm going to be using factoring to calculate the limit. So in this case, we're going to be using different approach to calculate this limit. So my limit will become limit x approaches 0. 4x squared minus 5x over x. So in this case, I'll be using factoring. You know, we know that there's a lot of factoring method. One of them is using the greatest common factor. So if I just factor out of x for the top expression, I'm going to get limit x approaches 0 if I factor out of x. And the first term, it's what's left is going to be 4x. And the second term, what's left would be just negative 5 over x. So look at that. It turns out that we can simplify this axis. So I'm going to be getting limit x approaches 0 for x minus 5. So basically, if I just substitute 0 for this expression for x minus 5, we're not going to be, we're not going to be ending up something 0 over 0. All right, so that's why we're going to be doing direct substitution of 0 in this case. So we're going to get 4 times 0 minus 5. So 4 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 5 is just negative 5. So this is our second limit. Again, we use the factoring. And then we use the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor method to deal with this uh, rational expression, then now we get our limit as negative 5. So let's move on to the second problem. In our second problem, again, we're going to be using again factoring, but we're going to be using different factoring methods. So our limit is limit x approaches negative 7, 2x squared plus 13x minus 7 over x plus 7. So limit x approaches negative 7. So I can factor this expression as, I can do this, 2x squared plus 13x minus 7. So this is going to be 2x and x, 2x times 2x times x would be 2, 2x squared. And then this is going to be, uh, if I just put 7 right here and negative 1 right here. So if I do the cross multiplication, so I'm going to be get 2, 2x times 2x times 7 it would be 14x, and x times negative 1 would be just negative x. So when I deal with this, simplify this, I'm going to get 13x, which I got the middle term. So that's why the way, the way I factor the top expression would be like this. 2x minus 
the number across it, minus 1, times x, the number across from it, which is 7. So x plus 7 over x plus 7. So look at that. We got x plus 7 factor on the bottom and also on the top. So I can simplify. So my limit will turn into this polynomial expression, actually, 2x minus 1. So now I can do the direct substitution. So if I just substitute negative 7 for x and calculate it and simplify it, so I'm going to be getting negative 15 as the answer for this limit. So, all right, guys, thank you for uh, watching. So today we've solved uh, three problems about uh, finding the limit algebraically, and there will be more uh, problems. There will be more uh, videos about solving uh, finding solving limits algebraically. Thank you for wa watching in advance.